Hi everybody, it's Julia here and today I have one of my art journal uh, book review videos. Um, so I have a series here on YouTube where I review the books I've been reading while I share a process video of sort of like an art journal spread. Uh, I really like that. I haven't read that many books lately, it's been taking quite a long time. Um, I have a hard time reading, so... <laughs> um, but I have not reviewed my the book I read before, the last one, so I thought I was going to talk to you both about them today. So here is my page I made for this book, which is called Freya. And these books are in a series called Sagan om Valhalla, which is the place uh, for North mythology. So also Gudana. So I'm really enjoying reading them. There are five books in the series and I just finished number two. I will start reading Saga, I think, is the third one. So here is the first book. So there is Freya, which is one of the gods in North mythology. Um, and what I really like about... Oh, I'm not going to talk about... <laughs> sorry, going to wait your voiceover. Uh, so this is what I've done. I started preparing the page for uh, the book Eden. Painting just black matte acrylic paint, uh, seeped a bit over here, but that's fine. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I have a sketch, so I'm going to use this watercolor paper to um, put that here. And um, yeah, I think that is it. So I will start doing my... Um, my page here visually and then I will talk to you about these two books. Okay so the two books uh, they are called Freya and Eden and also in the series that I have not quite read yet are Saga, Sigrid and Estrid. So <laughs> like I mentioned in this video I will be talking about the two first books while I do the sort of uh, visual for the second book. Uh, the first book is called Freya, and for those who know North mythology or anything about Asagurdana, Freya is sort of like the god of love and passion and war. Um, and in these books, they, she, uh, Freya is in it, and we also have Odin, and we have Thor, uh, Balder, Vidar, Frey, uh, so quite a lot of the characters, but they are human. So the book is sort of having them as humans. And I think I'm not like, I haven't read anything about the books, but I, I think it is sort of like how they become the gods that we know them. And um, so Freya, she started out her life as a priest or a priestess. So when the books are taking place, this is the Bronze Ages, and it's really interesting because the author is taking what she can find about the religion or what people believed up here in the North uh, during the Bronze Ages, and a lot of it shows that what was worshipped here was a goddess uh, for uh, having children and making sure the crops work, they sacrifice to the goddess. And that is what Freya and the priestesses that she serves with, what they do. They believe in this goddess. Uh, there's actually nine of them. And it's really interesting to sort of get a glimpse into that, um, into that belief too. And you can really tell how that sort of later will mix with um, what we call the North mythology now. Um, and for me who lives here and uh, have all of the generations behind me have lived here, it's really fun to get sort of an image of how it could have been for so many years ago. So Freya then is the main character in the first book and she is a priestess and um, what they do is they they do really have something magical with them within them they can cast spells and they can sort of I don't really know how to explain it but they sort of read scriptures not really scriptures Galder they call it um, to make sure everything goes their well way and they can sort of connect to the different gods um, but they are, have a bit of an issue because they're coming new people into sort of their territory or their land, which is the Asana. 
So she is Avon, and if you have read the North mythology, you know that Freya and Frey, which is actually her brother, they are Vaned, <laughs> um, and the the Asana comes in, and she goes with the others to sort of make peace, and it doesn't really go that well. Um, and in the end, it's a war between the Vaan and the Asana, and she um, takes Thor, which is the um, the son of Odin, and the, she takes him because the moon god goddess tells her to sacrifice him, and they do that sometimes. Um, sacrifice human lives but then she doesn't and it's a big thing and she runs away with him <laughs> um so yeah that's sort of like the book the first book that to sort of show the love between these two but they never going to fall in love and they never going to end up together really um but that is sort of the first to sort of get a real image of who this woman is and she is a really powerful priestess um and yeah, I'm not really explaining it very well, but yeah, she is really, really powerful. And I really like that in these books, they start with her. Um, so in the second book, she has grown a bit older. And the second book also includes uh, her daughter, Eden. And she is also the daughter of Thor. So it's a little bit of a love child there. Um, the book, I mean, Eden plays a part in the book, she, but I would not really class her as a main character. Uh, we have a few other people coming in here, and um, now there is a war uh, between a different witch has coming in and casting spells and making everybody very, very sick. And um, so what I'm working on here right now, <laughs> it looks a bit weird, isn't it? but she has a necklace, um, the Brusinium. Brusinium? Brisingham, yeah. Uh, it's made of such beautiful golden that it will take away all evil, sort of. But what all the people see is just a piece of rock and stone thrown together with twigs. Uh, and they think that Freya has gone mad trying to find this, um, this necklace. Uh, obviously she hasn't, but they do believe that. So in the, in the second book, um, it's all about Freya. She has sort of grown a bit too fond of herself. She's gone very powerful and she is taking down to earth when the moon goddess sort of drops her and the goddess of death sort of makes her her own. And that's why she has this sort of red mark in her in her face. So that is why uh, I also made Freya the sort of image even on this book, even though it's actually Eden's book. Um, I'm really enjoying this book. I know it, I, I'm trying to explain as clear as I can, but I realize when I'm talking out loud, it's like, you probably need to read it <laughs> or sort of have a bit of an understanding in the North mythology. What I really like is um, I've read quite a lot of the different um, stories and a lot of these stories come again in this book but in sort of like a humane form uh, this actually sort of makes sense and um, we still have magic and we have giants and dwarves and and all of that and goddesses and, and demons and witches but it sort of makes it feels like it could happen and I really like these books. So I have just started to read uh, Saga, and that is the daughter of Eden and Ul. And if, you, <laughs> if you're into this, you know that Eden's mother is Freya, and Freya's brother is Frey, and Frey has a son called Ul. So the two, Eden and Ul, their daughter, uh, they are cousins, and they get a child. Um, that wasn't really supposed to happen because uh, Eden is actually married to somebody else and she was raped. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> but it's really, really, I can highly recommend. If you're interested in North mythology and think that's really fun, uh, I really recommend these books. They are really, really well written and very exciting. And yeah, so um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read the other book. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this book and that you sort of got an idea of what I was talking about. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> if you have read them, I would really like to know what you think about them. Um, yeah, and I hope to see you soon.